to welcome to Svenare, who likes to be known as Sven, and to Stephen Yorkstone, who likes to be known as Mr. Yorkstone. Um, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> thank you for participating in this month's uh, episode of Facilitation Insights. Yes, Stephen and Sven met together on the Lean Higher Education Global Network, but spent most of the time discussing facilitation in a higher education context. Isn't that right? Oh, I'm, I'm being spotlighted. Okay. And um, they are both um, the stars of the weekly, I've been learning my Norwegian, Bera Craftic facilitation series, which pops up once a week, uh, which you've no doubt would see. And uh, yes, I'm now going to hand the microphone over to Stephen or Sven. I think Stephen's going to lead the way, but yeah, they'll tell you more about the, their adventures together. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Sven. Thank you. It's delightful to be here. It kind of feels lovely to be in this kind of warm community of facilities. It's like a kind of blanket of facilitation, but it's also slightly intimidating because you guys really know your stuff, right? And kind of Svenari and I, we're kind of learning together. You know, so we kind of met and we've just been kind of exploring facilitation and having discussions as as we go. I might I might share my screen um, and 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 get the presentation up there. Um, so I can see some folks there need to leave in about an hour's time. So we planned for a session um, that's about a little bit longer than an hour. Do you think we should cut it to to an hour, Svenari? What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, if we, could, if we could cut down some parts so that people get most of, of uh, the presentation and also some of their breakout rooms. So yeah. but let, let's aim to shorten it a, bit, a little bit. Okay. And whilst we're going, if you have any questions, you pop them in chat. We'll, we'll get to those and we'll pick up to them as we go. But it's lovely to be here. Is there anything else I need to say about us, Fenare? Oh. Let's, let's, let's have a go. Um, I think that's there's something about being international, which is lovely about being here, you know, being part of a community that's all around the world. Um, and we live in very different places of it. And I, uh, I live uh, there, you'll be able to see, that's me um, up there in, in Scotland. I like it's how you say up around. there in Scotland, Steve. Yeah, yeah, it was really, uh, here's when you, when you go really, really far up. You know, if ever the weather's bad, yeah, uh, you just need to talk to Svenare and he'll cheer you up. <laughs> but you're not in you're not in Tromso at the moment, though, Svenare. I'm not. I'm in um, Helsinki. Been here for the last week on a Erasmus Plus exchange to learn from our friends at um, uh, Helsinki in Ilopisto. And it's uh, Finnish is very hard language. So we're we'll trying to be learn a little bit um, about it this week, but um, I have not succeeded. But I am in Finland. Um. And I think we both benefit from being part of that kind of worldwide conversation, which the IAF really supports and is, is a glorious thing to be part of. Um, and so what we do every week is we, we put a video on YouTube and it's just a two minute video, but those videos are a kind of a distillation of about half an hour to an hour's worth of conversation where we just kind of bounce some ideas backwards and forwards. We have a dialogue. And then we summarize that dialogue very briefly for the YouTube channel. So we thought we'd have a dialogue today, have a story, explore our model, the way we think about facilitation, um, but also uh, invite you to share the way that you think about facilitation in, uh, in your practice. Would that be okay? Yeah. Yes. And we're gonna give a couple of breakout rooms and I'm rubbish at teams. So I might smile at, the, at somebody like Celeste to maybe arrange a bit of breakout rooms and we'll give you a chance to do that stuff there. But firstly, um, Svenari, tell us a little bit about Bada Crafty. Yeah, and uh, David, thank you. I mean, there was a crash course in, in Norwegian there before we started the meeting and Bada Crafty, if I should translate that directly into English, that would be sustainable. Uh, but, but it's a word that consists of, of two Norwegian words and, and bad it means to, to carry, the force to hold something. Uh, and crafty means with what kind of strength. Um, so so uh, and we, when we tried to figure out a name for our conversations and the, the vlog on YouTube, we fell into the trap of going into the Scandi 
English solution. So it became bad exhaustive facilitation. So there's a Norwegian and the English word. But, but the main point is that we, we uh, picked up on what we saw under the pandemic, the need to talk about how to make things sustainable in the, the, the conventional meaning of the word, but also how to start thinking about facilitation that needs to um, stand with over time and, and to be able to, to, to hold the platforms that we create for, for meeting spaces. So that's um, a little bit about uh, how, why we chose that word uh, in Scandi and also why that brings meaning to, to our model. And I, and I would say I, the, the first pro tip I would give you is never choose a non-standard English character in a word that you're using if you want anyone to ever be able to Google it. Um, I know there's a multi-language stream that the IF is looking at, but I tell you, whoo, search engine optimization. I mean, I've had more conversations about that than, than you'd think. Um, you may not have seen it. This is what Barrowcrafting looks like on our YouTube channel. So this is this is what it looks like. It's quite simple. They're just short videos. Um, we tend to, to record them. We don't record one a week. We tend to kind of bunch them up, maybe sometimes do two or three an hour and then, then put them out. And it's meant as a personal development project. It isn't meant to be videos. Well, I think there's something good about putting our experience out there to share. You know, it nourishes the community perhaps a bit. But really, it's a personal development project. It's about saying, how do we hold ourselves to account to support each other? Kind of like as kind of peer supervisors or kind of peer mentors to kind of note how, oh, I can see someone's clicked the link. Oh, there we go. Someone's found it. Um, to um, making a record of our learning holds us to account and, and, and keeps it through. And YouTube is quite an easy way of doing that. Um, I mean, I say that, Svenar is the one that does the editing. It, it, might, it might be an absolute nightmare, but, but there we go. Um, so, this is one of the things that we were doing when we were recording video. I just point randomly at the screen and go, so, and then Svenari might say something or might not. We'd normally edit that bit out, but obviously obviously we can't today. Yeah, we have, we have a blooper, bloopers edition as well, but, but I just would like to reinforce the idea that um, these are our conversation, it's about, peer mentorship and, and co-learning as we go. And the idea was that hmm, this might be interesting for others. It's very easy for us to share. Um, so why not do it? It, it could create some, some uh, side values and added values to, to that. So, so it's been a interesting now over a year with weekly episodes. Mm -hmm. it, that was not the plan. That was not just let's start and see where it goes. And you could think that, or we had that conversation the other day, uh, wouldn't we run out of topics to talk about? But you know what? That hasn't happened yet. And, and I can't see it happening. And it's quite miraculous to think that we can think about something every week to talk about about facilitation for more than a year. And we just kind of keep going. The thought that happened as I heard our theme tune, it distracted me, it was actually it was about the pandemic and about how Svenari and I have been working together collaboratively for maybe five or six years. We started with an Erasmus funded trip where we met face to face. But we've actually worked together much more over the past year or two years than we ever have before. And it's actually been quite enabling to kind of have these kind of online connections, kind of very much like, like we do today in the kind of the facilitation insight talks and some of the other stuff that IAF provides. Okay, so enough of us talking. Should we go to breakout thing first, Svenari? Yes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we've got one, two, three, four, five. So maybe maybe three breakout rooms, I think, but I'll brief people first before we put them in there. Um, because what we want to do is invite you to think about what your, your, the way that you might think about facilitation. So we talked a little bit about the meaning of barrowcrafting, you know, facilitation that holds and sustains and bears. And we'll talk about how we get under the bonnet of that a little bit. But I'd be interested in giving you an opportunity to reflect on what your model is, maybe on a post-it note, without overthinking it, you know, because I imagine all of us could talk about facilitation a lot. But if you just had, say, a index, an index card, do you know, I have some here, I, I love them, these index cards, any of you still use them? 
Oh, Andrew's nodding. Excellent. Um, there's a website called uh, thisisindexed.com. And if you get you want to see some funny jokes, it's a glorious source of visual gags. Um, so things like this. So a simple model with a few lines, maybe. Um, maybe you could produce a Venn diagram, perhaps. Think about questions that guide you and you facilitate. Principles to hold in mind as you facilitate. Or kind of something about the way that you think about facilitation. Yeah. So that's our gentle invitation for the first kind of breakout room. After this, we'll show you a bit about our thinking and then give you a chance to go into breakout rooms again before feeding back. Would that be OK? Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, Celeste, would you be able to put people in breakout rooms for me for around uh, 10 minutes? Would that be OK? Is that too long? Do we think 10 and minutes? And how many people right? would you like to have in each breakout room? um uh, three do you think john was that yeah john john says three and i john i defer to john's wisdom <laughs> on all things no i prematurely clicked leave the breakout room i didn't want to so oh. <laughs> celeste john andrew i i left prematurely i'm very sorry i hope i would have loved to hear what celeste had to to say Everyone is back and we can move on if you want. Super. So it's, Thank you. The floor is yours, Stephanie. Thank you. So we we're going to ask you to hold on to your thoughts, if that's okay. We're going to put you into the breakout rooms again in about 10 or 15 minutes to give you a bit of a chance to have a little bit more of a discussion and we'll invite feedback after that, especially because we want to try and hit time uh, for the top of the hour. So we said, you, well, what's your model on a post-it note? Would you have uh, a Venn diagram? Well, um, our model is uh, kind of like a Venn, a Venn diagram too, but our model kind of focuses on five different words. Let's start off in the middle. What do we have there, Svenari? So we start in the middle, we start off with methods and probably with as you know, many facilitators or um, both experienced and inexperienced would, would uh, dig down into their tool belts and toolboxes and talk a lot about that. So methods is, is all about these structures where we help ourselves to help group uh, do their conversations or, or, or work. So what kind of structures could help in, in the session we are. We have um, early on when we started talking about this, we also uh, raised ourselves on challenging questions that we should work on. For instance, are you over-focusing on methods rather than content and progress? Which is a, a something I see from time to time that, that it's all about the methods. And I love a good gimmick. You know, I love post-it notes, I love picture cards, I love all those things. But focusing on those is, is, is good. And often that's where we start the conversations about facilitation. Um, but then we started to realize that we, there's a kind of a, an edge of methods where methods become a little bit softer and they blend into the kind of the facilitation of who we are. You know, it's not just so much about the what we do, but the way that we do it. It's about, if you like, the abilities of the facilitator. And of course, this is a Venn diagram. There's overlap here. Kind of is, is listening a method or, a, or is it an ability? Is question stacking a method or is it a bit? Well, of course, it's a method, but it requires you to have good listening skills. So it's part of your abilities. Um, and that's about kind of our strength as a facilitator that we bring, that we bring to it. What have I missed, Svenari? Um, no, <laughs> loads. I mean, we do a lot of episodes and abilities as well, and we won't do that all here, but it's, uh, as I say, it's that, that um, a wall between the methods outside, the abilities inside, and we can talk about um, uh, feelings, thoughts, words, values, also to bring into uh, abilities what we bring as a facilitator uh, with us um, to, to the actions that we, we take. In making this, we were working in, in Tromso, kind of between Norway and English. 
and we kind of realize that the language that we have for this is necessarily flawed. So sometimes we'll use different words for these to kind of get the same kind of concept about it. And I guess that will be different in your context too. And I hope you're able to reflect on how you think about facilitation. I often reflect on that, you know, the, 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 the dashboard model where there's that diagram of all the dials and things that you flip round. I forget who made it. I'll try and find it and put it in chat later, which describes a lot of these different kinds of ways of thinking. On, on that diagram, on one side of it, it talks kind of more about the, the kind of the hard stuff. It's kind of a bit bigger than methods. You know, how many people have you got? How big is the room? How long is time? All those kind of things. So we, we talk there about kind of design. Now, of course, design kind of wraps around methods, doesn't it? Because you have to have that dialogue between, well, the methods that I use that fit in the design. Will that method work with that number of people in that room? Do I have the abilities to work that method with that people in the room? So there's a dialogue between these different, with these different things. But those constraints help us think about how we how we do that we do that facilitation. And in some ways, you could say that there, there's even an even skill set of how to design uh, sessions or or, or uh, multiple sessions needed to 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 move a group forward or help them do their best um, thinking. And and here we could. In my experience, I have also done this myself and, and see other people do this. We are, we could fall into the trap of defining this kind of for ourselves more than it's good for the group or for the outcome. So, so that brings us to the next item. So this is where we start to think. Now, we both work as internal facilitators to our organizations, which I know isn't the same for many facilitators. But I guess for all of us, we've got to think, well, what is the goal? of the facilitate, facilitation. Now, when we talk about this model, many people say, well, this is not the way to facilitate. We should facilitate for the good of the group. It's up to the group to decide the goal, right? That's true. But nonetheless, there is still kind of a reason or a purpose or a meaning that you might want to put in that box other than goal. You know, there is, there is, the, there is the cause and understanding that then allows us to do the design work to put it into context to make sure that we get to that meaning, that purpose to support that group as they go through that the process that we've designed using the methods supported by our abilities. And, and as we uh, kept working with the model and we kept also discovering and, and diving into the core principles of, of, of facilitation as the IAF have stated them, we found that um, many of them speak well to the elements that we had now started to use uh, within our, our model. But especially when it comes to goal, it, it feels kind of so obvious um, that we should aim for something. But I am over and time again, I see people just signing using methods and haven't asked that key question. So what do you want to achieve? What's, what do you want to have at the end of this session, these sessions? Mm -hmm. um, and and um, at the same time wondering, how do we know that these goals are the right ones? Because these sit, because we don't sit alone. Um, as, we were, as we were doing this, I think, Svenar, you've been at a conference with high performance athletes, right? Yeah. And if you're a high performance athlete, there's a lot that you do to do that. And you train in your, your skills, your, your physical skills or whatever, but you also pay attention to what's around you. And so this is something that actually, I think as experienced facilitators, we will all do and often do through practice and unconsciously, but we kind of started realizing that in fact, the social context around us as individual facilitators and around the groups is also part of that facilitation piece. Svenari? Yeah, this for me was maybe the um, biggest um, um, discovery when we, when we a few years back kind of drew up this model uh, and something that I, I was finally able to put my finger on to say that of course social context, both for the facilitator and also for the group um, means a lot. 
um, and, and it should be paid attention to. And now, these days, when I plan for sessions, when I'm commissioned to do a, a, a job uh, and plan with those who, who have commissioned me, social context is something I really listen for. My ears are kind of working overtime to pick up on what's there. And as an internal facilitator, that gives me a, a one position to take care of that. If you're external, there's another one. You, you, you might dive into a hornet's nest or something without knowing it. So for me, that is one of the, the main things um, that I use in my planning. Because of course, there's that dialogue between that goal and that social context, that kind of there's something else is going on here. And since doing this, I've, it's been helpful for me to have a structure like this. Now, my father, I'm sure he was misquoting somebody, said, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. So this isn't intended to be right, but it's intended to be useful. And so when I'm sitting down with a client uh, and they ask me to facilitate, I can say to them, well, here's how I think about facilitation. There's these five things. Tell me what's your goal. Tell me what's going on. What are the constraints we're working with? Do you have any ideas about what you'd like to do? Here's what I can bring, but here's what I can't bring. So this holding this in mind helps me have a way of thinking about my facilitation when I'm with my with my clients. How, how do you use, use the models, Fanari? Um... Uh, yeah, very similar. I mean, we, we, we talk a lot, lot about this, but my first discovery when, was a few days after we had stumbled or created wisely this model, I had a dialogue with my, my, my leader who wanted me to uh, lead in, in, in a session. And I felt that there's clearly something wrong here. And that was the first time I really discovered uh, the importance of um, actually conveying to my leader or the client at this time, uh, what fac the facilitation for me meant. Uh, and with this model, I was able to lead her through that and we designed a whole another session. So that was kind of, of, of a eye opener even to me sitting with that. So, so now I use this quite, I mean, it's, it's uh, under my skin. So it's, it's quite natural for me, for me to use it. Sometimes I draw it up with the client but mostly it's a guideline for me in how do I uh, plan and execute um, sessions and my own facilitation. So here's the question for our next breakout group. How does our conversation that we've, Sonari and, uh, and I have had just now compare to the conversation you just had in that breakout room? How does that compare to um, this kind of picture that we presented, those kind of five words or five concepts that we have behind our way of thinking about facilitation. What would you add or remove? You know, all models are wrong. Some models are useful. What's wrong? What could be more useful? How would you build on this to help you? So that's a prompt for another discussion group. We've got in about another 10 minutes, which will give us a chance to sum up and then have a couple of questions before winding up at the top of the hour. Is that about right, Svenari? That's fine. And a small tip is when we send you out to breakout rooms now, if you find it hard to remember those two questions or prompts, you could just um, take a screenshot here and bring it with you into the breakout rooms. Oh, I'll go back to that. Ah, oh, everyone comes back like magic. <laughs> you know, I went in, I had real world facilitation the other day and had to remember that that people don't come back from real world rooms quite so quickly. <laughs> you, know? you, had to go, maybe, you had to go looking for them. And, yeah. and, may, and maybe yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, no, I, I had that as well. And you know what, what happened? People were so happy to be together again that we needed to extend the breaks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There was this need to extend the breaks. Yeah. And so we talk of social context, of the need yeah. that people have for connection yeah. after a while they haven't. Right. Um, so we're going to open up for some chat for about yeah. maybe six yeah. or so minutes. So I'll, and I'm going to sort of draw away whilst, whilst Svenari looks after us. We will we'll have the pleasure of looking um, at the magic happening before our eyes. But the main thing is now you have the uh, possibility to to give us some of that feedback and we can combine the discussions you had in the first breakout room with the discussions you had now. And I'll just open it up um, uh, for you to, to grab the word and give us some feedback about your discussion, um, how 
did the conversation you had earlier on compare to our model? And is there something that you would remove or add uh, when thinking of that? So I'm just going to invite you to, to the stage. Uh, can I speak? Come on, John, we'll support you. Yeah. Come on, John. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to summarize uh, uh, the discussion. I, I got there late anyway, um, because I got some technical problems. Uh, however, uh, the, the thing that came out, I, I believe, was the the importance of goal, I mean, clarifying goal, uh, stretching the goal a little bit, you know, that, that seemed fundamental. Is there some scope there? Uh, the, personally, I, I, I thought that, that putting your five items in a row, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think that's quite, that's not the best formulation you know they they should be maybe in a certain that's better thank you very much <laughs> but in a van uh, as a van so that there's a sweet almost spot. a van uh, yeah there is a dynamic there's certainly a dynamic between those five things and and it's it's a good five it, you know it's a it's yeah. a it's a handful isn't it uh, it's a good handful, uh, but I think that the the, the goal is a, is a is a really good start. Good, thanks. It's very very good reflections, and uh, and um, when you create models like that, sometimes it's uh, it's um, uh, rather a circumstantial how it uh, how it becomes a a a model or a picture out of it. So that's something that we could really play with. Please, anybody else, if you have some, some reflections to, to share from your discussions? Well, I'll jump in. Um, one, I think our group agreed that perhaps the um, uh, van or some other way than the, the, the line would be, would be better. What struck me and I shared was that your model that you're presenting was more around the facilitation event or experience. Um, I totally concur you know, with, with, um, with it. When you said model the first time to us, I was thinking of my facilitation mindset, um, foundational approach, which includes things like principles, uh, no, philosophy, principles, social context as a descriptor, and then move into your model around the goals, the design, et cetera. So my model would be much bigger um, with your model being part of it. And I was just curious uh, what your response would be to that observation. Well, first of all, it would be very exciting to see how you would kind of draw that up with, with our model in there and, and kind of to build on that. And that is, that is also something we have intended that, that people should, <laughs> yes, <laughs> take the opportunity I'll try. To, I'll try. To, to, to expand and, and to, to, to play with the model and, and, and think about it. That's why it makes it so exciting to talk about it in a, in a session like this with, with, uh, with the experienced uh, facilitators. So, so, I've seen spirals with something similar. And yeah. you know, I'm going to play with it, starting with the philosophy, going into principles, the approach, you know, then spiraling into goal design activities yeah. Yeah. or method. Personally, I often, as I don't use it as a a early phase planning tool, so it's it becomes kind of sequential for me. Um, uh, but I think that it's it's uh, flexible in that way that you could. Uh, probably as Steve has done here that we will play with now, um, draw it up in in, uh, in different shapes and forms to see what makes sense um, to me, what would make sense to, to, to others. I have to say one of the reasons it's like that is so that it fits on a page. You know, is that really, it's because we, when we wrote it, it was a world when you had to have stuff that you could print out, right? So it was just, so it fits in a page and we can, we can describe it there. 
but and the reason that we tried to draw that line around the bottom was to kind of show they were all interlinked but i do like that idea that it sits in a field that's made of philosophy or principles or kind of a kind of a way of being i guess mm. it may be that your the aspects of your model is what i would share with a client yet mm. underneath it all it always is that very strong philosophy and principles mm. i like yeah. the way you put it in there thank you mm. for sure i think if, if i would just um, uh, encourage if there are any more we will have time to have at least one more reflection before we're going to try to tie it off um, uh, in with a shortened timeline so um, please feel free to jump in and, and, and after that we'll have a kind of conclusion and then we'll open up for those who would like to stay to have a further conversation. Yeah, I can add some more. So one of the things that we were talking about is about the goal. And we, we said that we always like to go deeper in the goal, meaning that we need to talk about the, 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 the impact that this session may have in this group have some clarity about it not because we are dogmatic and we want really to achieve that but to help us build on the session as well and be clear that possibly that outcome may not be achieved there will be another one but it's a very good way to make it clear to the client and to the group as well so that we create this elasticity when we are in the session to allow anything else to come up that it's meaningful for the group as well. And so we talk about an experience and an, an experience as well. Uh, so we, we put outcomes, impact, and the experience within the goal. For sure, I, I love that. And that is also something that um, I have come across and experienced myself that sometimes you have to clarify for anyone who had commissioned you that at least with my values and my model, I will make sure that there is involvement with the group. That means that something uh, stuff can happen that that's not in that direction that that is wanted, but also meaningful and valuable, and something that uh, the, the client haven't thought of as a good solution. Time and tide waits for no human. Um, I think. Thank you for those thoughts and we will carry on for discussion but I know some colleagues do need to leave very shortly so we shall wind up. Um, we, this is our model here. There is another reason it's on a line <laughs> and the other reason tells a story about Svenari and I and our collaboration across the North Sea. It talks a little to how facilitation makes a journey and takes us places and how there's a little bit of Viking in all of us. So thank you for the time that you spent with us today. It's been an absolute delight to share with you, Svenari. I am a pirate, not a Viking. <laughs> Pirates are just as useful. And also I'd just say thank you for the opportunity to, to be here. And, and the feedback is very inspiring to keep um, continuing um, developing the model and our understanding of facilitation. And that is also the core of um, conversations that Steve and I have in our weekly episodes in Bodycraft Facilitation. Okay, thank you, Sven. Thank you, Stephen. Um, we're going to be taking a break. Facilitation Insights is going to be taking a break for July and August, and we'll be back in, on the 1st of September with uh, Sandra Janoff. Maybe some of you know who Sandra Janoff is. Um, just uh, Sandra Janoff, uh, along with uh, Marvin Weisbord, who wrote the book Future Search. Uh, she'll be coming along. And they also wrote the book, which is the first book uh, that made me realize that facilitation wasn't something that was just going on in my head. It was when somebody showed me this book, don't just do something, stand there, which made me realize that this posture that I had discovered wasn't all going on in my head, as I said. So Sandra will be joining us on the 1st of September. She has asked us, I had a chat with her a couple of weeks ago, and she's asked us to do some pre-reading. I have done, I've put the PDF in the cover, in the, in the chat, if I can put it in again. Um, so yes, it's, it's um, a chapter she wrote recently. Uh, called Striving for Wholeness, and uh, she would appreciate if you could, from now until September, 
do that little bit of homework for Sandra's session, which will be on the 1st of September. All right. But there'll be some stuff going on in the meantime, so don't worry. You won't okay. uh, run out of any facilitation. Thanks again, Stephen. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, everybody. I have for to go. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.